Welcome to the BCC software presentation talking about the July 2023 rate case. Uh, presenting this will be uh, myself, Mitch Carpenter. I'm the director of product management here at BCC software. I've uh, been here for a long time and uh, Adam Kester is also going to be presenting a lot of the content uh, as he really oversees uh, all of our postal compliance across all the different uh, products that support pre-sorting and mail preparation uh, across uh, the entire BCC software line of products. We're going to start off with some overview information, sort of a quick bullet list of the high level things. And then we're going to dig in a little bit and talk to a little more specifics and where it's appropriate, a couple of details about how products are handling specific things. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. So a, a big disclaimer on, on where we are with this rate case is that all this information is current of today's recording. Uh, that's June 15th. Um, we have uh, a lot of information from the post office and we've been working with them throughout the entire process to get as clear requirements as we can. But at the moment, we still do not have a lot of final uh, documentation as well as the final um, postage statements and finalized rates. Uh, we think all those things are in a, a pretty good state and we shouldn't see very many changes between now and those finalizations. Um, but we are moving forward with our, our products uh, with the requirements as they exist today, uh, as well as the releases coming in the next week or two. Um, just make sure you pay attention to the, the releases for each of these products as we move forward. Uh, there may be changes as these things get finalized and we'll, we'll update those as soon as we can when we know about them. Uh, we have just here a general slide, just the reminder that what we have coming up is the rate case on uh, July 9th is the implementation date. That's the day that the new rates and new requirements apply. And then we also have that Postal 1 uh, go live date of June 25th. That's the day that mailings for that post July 9th date will start being accepted. Um, we've got a couple of detailed screenshots from the, the postal documents about which versions of mail.dat and mail.xml are going to be accepted and on which dates. Um, and then just the reminder that some of those mail.xml versions will continue to accept, uh, it, though they're, they're, they're end of life in those versions, those things are going to be uh, uh, continue to be accepted for updates on uh, jobs that were um, submitted prior to the July 9th version. And for those of you who've been doing this for a while, this is a pretty standard approach for the Postal Service. So uh, hopefully just business as usual for the mail.dat mail.xml. Yeah, and it, real quick, it's also worth mentioning too that we did not get a new version of mail.dat in this one, just new errata is applied. Um, that means a couple changing version, uh, a, a couple changing uh, ingredients in the in the in the technical specification were updated. Uh, a couple things were slightly tweaked in terms of their description, so not a ton of huge updates there. Adam, do we know if there's an NBR client required for the? There rate is a yes, there is a mail dot uh, NBR client that is required. To, so make sure that you update that for that uh, Jul, uh, June 25th date. Uh, here's just a very high level overview of the things that we'll be going through. Um, we've already mentioned the mail.dat and XML changes. There are rate changes. We're not going to go into those two, uh, two directly as they're, um, they won't change how you use the software, but they will change obviously what you see showing up on your postage statement. We've got a number of structural changes uh, for both pricing and uh, mail preparation. And then we've got uh, an enhancement to an existing promotion that we'll go over at the end. And you'll see that uh, this slate of changes is uh, a lot less disruptive than we saw uh, in January this year. So um, that was really concerning because they were changing some pretty, pretty foundational uh, ways that the mail was sorted with changing from sacks to tubs. Um, there is a little bit of disruption here, um, as you'll always expect when there's changes, uh, but in general should be much less disruptive to people's operations than the previous rate case. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Mitch, right? Like the, the changes that are happening for market dominant products are in general uh, applying new prices, new ways of calculating prices, where you're going to see those big disruptions this time is going to be in the competitive products and the changing to how they're uh, requiring parcels to be sorted. Uh, so the first one that we're going to go over should look familiar if you were paying attention to some of the changes in January. Uh, the SCF pallet discount that was added in January is getting some updates. Uh, that one that was added in January was explicitly for flats, uh, did not apply to letters. We are adding the that same discount for SCF 
pallets. And now to be clear, that's not SCF pallets at the pallet level. That is all pallets that are processed at the SCF facilities for letters will get a discount for the pieces on each of those things. So that's the pallet level of SCF, three digit, five digit, and five digit carrier routes. The five digit carrier routes is worth noting because uh, for letters, those things are processed at the SCF, whereas in flats, that same pallet level gets processed at the DDU. So that's a, a different discount that's applied uh, for that pallet level between um, letters and flats. Um, but either way, you're getting that discount and our software will apply, apply these discounts um, automatically. Uh, they're also extending the discount for uh, the SCF pallet discount for flats to those same five digit pallets that we saw uh, that we see above for letters. And uh, as it as it was true in January, it continues to be true, but it's worth noting again that these discounts apply to the pallet level and does not matter where these pallets are submitted, right? So whether you bring this thing to origin or you bring it to the NDC further upstream, if they are the correct level of pallets, they will get the discount for those pieces on them, in addition to the uh, entry discount that you would get uh, bringing it to the SCF or the NDC. And I would say definitely keep your eyes and ears open when you're dropping mail off at the dock. Um, the term SCF uh, is used in so many places. There's an opportunity for business mail entry not to understand exactly and try and to let try and tell you that you might not be eligible for a discount. And and in general. That's that's more of a training and understanding issue. Um, we're we're certain we have this dialed in uh, from a requirement standpoint correctly. So um, you know, just just uh, keep keep your eyes and ears open. It'll probably be a little confusing for the BME right at the beginning, uh, but they should get it straightened out over the year. That's right. Uh, next on our list is a, a change to how um, the flats pricing structure works, which applies to heavier letters as well. Um, so the, this is changing how the pound pricing is applied to each of those pieces. So we've got an example that comes right out of the USPS documentation there. Um, any piece that is above four ounces will first have its piece price applied to it. That's, that's the same as it was before. And then we'll have the pound price, but only poundage over the four ounces will be applied. So we've got a, a screenshot here as we uh, look at this a little bit better. You'll see a new column on the 3602 statements that includes the pounds charged. So on that previous example, if you have a six ounce piece, um, those first four ounces will be considered free and you'll only get charged for the two ounce price. Uh, and that's each ounce above the, the four ounce free uh, limit that they've set up here. So well, another way to think about it, that free can sometimes be a little confusing, but it, it's also valid. Uh, but the way to think about this now is that they're considering the first four ounces of postage to be paid by the piece price. You're already paying the piece price. OK, so you've given them money for the piece. They're saying that covers the first four ounces, and then they're only charging you the pound rate on pieces that exceed that. The simple math is. Weighted piece minus four ounces times pound rate gives you what will show up in that pounds charged column. Um, right. And it, it 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 sounds confusing, but it's really it's really not that not that big of a change. Uh, obviously, the calculation will result in different postage numbers. So the magnitude of the postage changes is, is whatever they've specified, but uh, the change in complexity is really not that. That's right. Uh, there is a change in parcels as well, and this is starting to get into some of those things that we mentioned before about where you're going to start seeing changes in preparation. Uh, the previous threshold for removing a piece from machinable to non-machinable was noted as 27 by 17 by 17. That is changing uh, to the 22 by 18 by 15, uh, and this is across the board for anywhere that machinable or non-machinable prices are applied, right? So uh, anything that it touches on that distinction uh, is going to be updated there. So, for example, parcel select, parcel select lightweight uh, will be impacted, as well as uh, market dominant prices or uh, pieces in some uh, some scenarios. It's also worth noting that there are some class specific uh, dimension requirements that happen in in uh, the DMM in Section 201. You'll want to make sure that if you're close to those thresholds or, or any of those pieces that you're looking at might be around those ranges that you're, you're checking on the specific dimension requirements. 
our software should be applying all those things correctly. Um, one example of that for uh, for worth noting is the parcel select lightweight has different requirements on the size of the piece depending on how much it weighs, right? So you want to make sure that those things that are specific to parcel select lightweight are not changing. But when you get up to where that general applicability of the machinable to non-machinable threshold uh, is is going to be uh, applied, that's going to kind of apply across the board to all parcels. And we'll we'll kind of touch on this uh, as we go through the rest of these parcel changes. But the thing to point out is any parcel mailing that you know you did it a certain way last time, it may be very different this time. So uh, while I said these changes in general are less disruptive overall, if you do have a lot of parcel volume, you are going to have to pay some pretty specific attention to the size, the shape, the weight, and where it, it needs to be mailed now. Uh, and it's especially important if you've got anything that you've already uh, pre-applied in Disha marks to. Um, you you may have a piece that went as parcel post before, but it's now going to go as USPS ground advantage. So just make sure you check your stock and check your parcel shipments to make sure you're not in trouble when that mailing shows up again. That's right. And and Mitch, you mentioned one of the biggest changes that's going to be happening here uh, is the change for the. The, the rebrand and uh, shifting of products uh, into the USPS Ground Advantage, this new product that the post office is rolling out uh, with their goal to help streamline uh, parcel mailings. So it, it does combine a number of what was previously supported products. So we're not changing in, in terms of like what you can ship, just where and how it's being uh, right. how it's being prepared. Um, so the first class package services, also known as FCPS, is being uh, consolidated into this with parcel select ground, as well as U USPS retail ground, as well as the return products associated with those. Um, it's it's just worth noting really high level here that parcel select ground was in the package services uh, a class of mail, and it is being moved to first class, which means that a lot of changes are coming to pieces that would have previously been shipped as uh, parcel select ground. Um, the, the pricing structure for all these parcels is updated. You shouldn't see a major change from this uh, going to the four ounce, eight ounce, 12 ounce, and then up to 15.99 uh, ounces uh, because those prices were generally already the same right. in those ranges anyways. Um, but it is worth noting that that rate structure application is changing. Um, and then as noted before, the, the parcel select ground products are now a first class mail product, which means that uh, anything that was applied there previously is now subject to those first class mail preparation rules. Um, so that's the palletization requirements. Um, it's still zoned and all those pieces are going to be sorted as single piece, which is all notable. Um, so as Mitch said before, if you were doing a lot of ground uh, and you need to switch over to first class mail, make sure you're checking uh, to see what changes you're going to have to be making there for sure in how those pieces are labeled is going to come up and, and some preparation rule changes are going to apply as well. And you may even find that certain things you're shipping now that you are uh, doing under that ground may no longer be reasonable to ship in the first class uh, postage. So in some cases, you may even have to consider changing the packaging for a parcel you're shipping to control the cost. Um, like I said, this is probably the most disruptive portion. Uh, and what you're going to see also is that the, the support in individual products is uh, not necessarily uh, all inclusive. So with the mail manager product, the ground advantage is now tied to the bound printed matter parcel post option. So um, and, and you'll see depending on what product you're using, it should be it should be made clear to you what what options you need to do this. I believe this is going to be available in pre sort uh, as a standard feature uh, later this year. Is that correct? That's correct, right? Right now we are uh, it, it's worth kind of like calling out that first class package services. If you were doing that before, really not that much is changing for you um, because those pieces were previously limit, limited to 16 ounces uh, or less than 16 ounces, right? So if they hit that 16 ounce threshold, they had to go parcel select. Um, but if you if you were uh, fully under that threshold before, then you're gonna still be fine. You're still gonna ship everything roughly the same as it was before. But if you were shipping heavier pieces, those that first class option of USPS Ground Advantage goes all the way up to 70 pounds. Um, also, by moving over that parcel select uh, ground option, we're adding dimensional oversized and cubic pricing. Um, as Mitch mentioned, for the pre-sort product, we did have support for parcel select ground. Um, 
as it stands in this first release, we are going to support what was previously supported in first class package services, the up to 16 ounces, and we'll be adding the what what's transitioning over from parcel select ground in a future release. Um, bulk mailer was previously limited in its support of those first class packages uh, to just the 16 ounces. That's going to continue to be the same as well as in post pre-sort. Uh, what's supported for USPS ground advantage will match up with what was previously supported for first class package services. And, and the same is true for mail manager. First class package services below 16 ounces are still included in the software. Uh, it's only when you go over that weight threshold that it's tied to an option ownership. That's right. Uh, there's a restructure along with those USPS ground advantage changes to parcel select and parcel select lightweight. Um, they've collapsed the pricing for those pieces, and it's worth noting that's not preparation rules. So uh, non-machinable and irregular preparation rules still apply. They'll still have to be separated from the machinable, um, but the price for each of those pieces is still the same. Um, the zone pricing has been removed from parcel select for that DNDC uh, pricing, and it's all just a single rate going to the DNDC now. Um, and that comes to that, that next bullet point there, that rates are reduced to a single rate per destination entry point type. That means that they've removed uh, any of the finer sortation rates that come, came along with entering at, for example, the SCF or the NDC. There used to be a five digit rate if you sorted those parcels down to that rate. That has been removed. So in general, you can say that if you're bringing the piece, if the pieces can be brought to an entry point because they're processed there, they will receive a single rate no matter what they could have been sorted at. So if you're bringing what could have been sorted to the five digit level to an SCF, you're still just going to receive that SCF rate. Um, in addition to all that, the none entry point rate uh, pricing, so that would have applied to like dropping pieces at origin where you would have got no entry point discount, um, that has been removed. Um, so that means really at this level, you have to be going to the processing facility for those pieces. And anything that can't be uh, can't meet those minimum requirements to be entered, or if you don't want to go to that uh, processing facility, then those have to be shipped USPS ground advantage at that single piece rate. Um, also, the pricing structure here is changing. Again, there shouldn't be any major changes that you see for that, uh, but those weight breaks are now broken down into that 4, 8, 12, and then 15.999 ounces. And as we said, a little disruptive now, um, but the fact that they're making the pricing approach consistent across more of these products, I think in general is better for the industry because you'll have you'll have a consistent way that pricing is applied and, and the pricing will vary by the class of mail, but at least you'll know that in both this preparation and that preparation, I've got to be considered about, am I over four ounces, am I over eight ounces? Uh, the, the, the size thresholds um, get a little more standardized too. So in general, this is probably a good change, uh, yeah. but a little confusing right off the bat. Yeah, that, that's right, Mitch. And the USPS has stated their goal with all these parcel changes is to streamline and simplify, right? So like you said, if you're switching between mail classes, depending on that pricing structure, what you what you can qualify for, in general, you're going to be dealing with a very similar situation. It's just applied in a different way. Uh, there's a couple incentives that we'll talk about. Um, in the, the first one of these is the marriage mail incentive pricing. Um, marriage mail is a, a piece of mail that contains a number of different advertisers in the same mail piece. Um, so this incentive will apply to those pieces that uh, have meet some of those specific requirements. It, one of those requirements is going to be that it has to have at least four different advertisers. It applies to flats and letters uh, that are less than two ounces and mailed at saturation rates, um, but, but not EDDM retail. Um, and then you have to identify those things in the EDOC and on the postage statement uh, if you're claiming that. Um, a couple additional requirements apply here, including one that is that you have to have these things in it. Uh, you have to do at least 10 of these mailings in one calendar year. Otherwise, that discount that you uh, get on your postage statement is going to be reverted and you'll have to pay that difference in pricing. Um, and they have to be submitted by EDOC. Um, and, and really, that, that EDOC submission is pretty simple and we will be adding support for this uh, in a couple of products in the future. Uh, at the moment, though, uh, really, it's just our post pre-sorting products, uh, uh, window book, dat mail, and um, post pre-sort that support adding that that um, identifier in the in the e-doc at the moment. And then just to to clarify, because a lot of people 
have gotten confused and conflated yes. marriage mail and plus one mail. So this is not an additional piece of mail. So the, the scenario here is a single enclosure with content from at least four separate advertisers. So it's still a single envelope. Um, it, it's not as complex as plus one. This is a much more achievable scenario for most of our customers. Um, and we do expect to, uh, well, hopefully in, in the mail manager products, we hope to support this in a, in a follow up release to the rate case. It didn't uh, didn't make it out the door, as Adam said. Uh, but if you are using one of our post pre sort products that uh, will support your ability to uh, claim these discounts. And of course, um, the onus is somewhat on the mailer. We're not going to keep track of the number of mailings you're doing per year. That's right. Um, I think we will probably validate that at saturation rate. Um, mm -hmm. But the remainder of the program requirements are are incumbent on the mailer to comply with. That's right. Uh, the last uh, promotion or enhancement that to a promotion that we're going to talk about here is going to be a little sparse on the information, and and that's really because there's not a lot of support for it in our products at the moment. Um, the technical requirements for this promotion are still being developed by the post office, and we're waiting to do all those correctly the first time rather than put out something that'll have to be changed and potentially confuse, confusing. Um, but this is an enhancement to the informed delivery promotion. Um, previously, you could not have claimed any of those promotion uh, discounts on saturation pieces, uh, and this enhancement will allow you to do that with a number of additional requirements going along with it, like it's got to be uh, Eighty percent of a version that's going to a DDU has to match up with that, um, with the with those saturation rates in order to qualify, and some things like that. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of little technical uh, details in here that we want to get right, um, and it, it'll be supported in some capacity in in the majority of our products moving forward, but not on the initial release. And once again, the the requirements we have, uh, which we're not going to go through now since they're not final. Uh, some of them are a bit esoteric and they are not things that software can necessarily keep track of for you. So this is another area where we'll make it so that you can claim the discount. That's uh, right. But complying with a lot of the program requirements will be incumbent on the mail. That's right. And that brings us to the end of, of our coverage of, of the changes that are coming on July 9th. Um, if you do have questions, um, please reach out to us either in the support or sales department if you're looking for another solution uh, or something to enhance what you're doing today. Um, we also have our user forums and our, our uh, uh, general areas that we can uh, add some additional help, um, but don't be afraid to reach out, right? Like there's a lot of complexity with these things. We're more than willing to walk you through them and hopefully these webinars continue to be helpful to you. Um, we also have a, a very quick slide at the end here, and we'll we'll try to make sure all this is posted for your reference. Uh, just some additional resources on the post office side if you want to go back and check some of these requirements yourself. Okay. So everybody, we want to thank you very much for coming to the coming to view our reporting today. I always forget we're not live, um, and uh, we really hope you've gotten some meaningful information out of this. And and as Adam said, um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. We'll do our best to read the tea leaves on what the Postal Service is trying to do and try and make sure we can express it to you in software that makes sense and helps you get better postage rates. That's right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.